play around with it and maybe make some enhancements to it and, and do that sort of thing. It's a real simple game. And the odds, believe it or not, are stacked against you in it. Um, like all gambling games are. It's a game called High Low. You have the ability to bet, you roll two dice. You have the ability to bet whether you think you're going to roll high, low, or seven. High is less than seven, oh, I'm sorry, high is greater than seven, low is less than seven, and seven is seven. All right? So you roll a two and a, if you say low and you roll a two and a one, you win. If you uh, roll uh, pick seven and you get a seven, you win. If you pick uh, high and you roll a six and a four, you win. If you pick high and you roll a seven, you lose. If you pick high and you roll snake eyes, you lose. All right? So pretty simple game. Um, really, um, and we'll implement the, the betting feature a, a, uh, probably today or, or uh, in class on, on Tuesday. <clears throat> but really, you get paid one to one if um, you pick high or low and you win. So if I bet one uh, if I have $100 and I bet one, if I pick high and it indeed is high, I'll have $101. <clears throat> if you pick seven and you win, you get paid four to one. So uh, if, you, if I pick seven and it was seven and I had $100 and I bet a dollar, I'd have $104. All right? So um, that's how it works. So let's go and look at it. I downloaded it. Let me go and open it in Android Studio. All right, what I want to do is I want to play it first, and then I want to um, talk about the code. And we'll look at code that we've seen before, and we'll look at code that we haven't seen before. Um, which makes sense, right? So, I go and run this. I will pick this one. This actually isn't using the double screen now. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why this behaves differently depending every day I plug it in. But that's okay. It's working. That's the good news. All right. So there's a spinner control. I can pick high, low, or seven. So I'll pick seven. I pick hit play. It rolls the dice for me. And it says I got a two and a four. That's six. So I lose. All right. I'm going to pick seven again. Two and a two I lost again. Seven. I won. Yay. So I would quit if I was actually gambling because I'd be two dollars ahead. Right. I dropped two and I won four. So time to cash in chips with, with a two dollar win. So that's how it works. Let's, let's think about the stuff that we um, see in this that we haven't seen before. All right? We've seen a spinner before. We've seen a spinner control, so that's not new. We've seen a text uh, box where we put dynamically put text in. We've seen that before. Okay? We have not seen images before, so that's a new one. Um, we have uh, not seen randomization before. So those are sort of the two new concepts with this one. Those are the two obvious new concepts. When we actually look at the code, we might see some other new stuff as well. All right? So let's go and look through 
the code. And I'm going to do the same bit I did before of opening up Word, because I know it's useful for me, because I can't see looking at it. So I can imagine you might have a hard time viewing it in Android Studio. And I'm not aware off the top of my head of anywhere I, any way I can make it bigger within Android Studio. So let's start by looking at the strings XML file. Strings XML file has nothing real new here. All right, have our app name, action settings. I don't think I think that's there, but I don't think we use it. Uh, play, make choice, low seven high, six sided die for die, one lost. Some of these strings I don't think I used. I'm not sure why I put them in there. I must have been talking about something in class and put it in even though I didn't really use it. So we've seen this stuff before. So nothing really new here. Now remember, what's the big advantage of doing this? Twofold. Anywhere in our app, we can refer to these string values and it will be consistent. So consistency is good, right? Calling labels the same thing are good. I'll give you an example, not to digress too much, but it's from the old, old days of programming. I worked for a, a company in the food business, and it was crazy because there was an entity in, for our, our customers had people that they called their principals, all right? Not, not people, but individuals or organizations rather, that they called principals. Those principles were sometimes called manufacturers. So when I first started working there, sometimes I would see something labeled on a screen as manufacturer, sometimes I would see principal. I was baffled. What, you know, what's the difference between a manufacturer and a principal? It looks like they're the same thing, but like why is it called this in one place and this call, it called this in another? Well, the reason it was called this in one place and that in the other is because of sloppy programming, right? Every program had the label in it to say manufacturer or principal. If there was this sort of scheme used, you could guarantee that didn't happen. You could pick the label that you would want and every place would use that exact same label. So that's the one big advantage. Now, we're dealing with small apps that just have one activity, all right? Um, But still, we're building the framework, we're building on a framework that we can use um, to accomplish, um, you know, to accomplish more. The other big advantage, if, if we could add more activities and more screens and so on. The other advantage, as we mentioned before, and we haven't done this yet, is we can make another resource file. And what we add to the resource file are what, what is called a resource qualifier. And there's all different kinds of resource qualifiers. There's resource qualifiers for language. There's resource qualifiers for the size of the screen, the density of the pixels on the screen, and so on. So in a case like this, we could have a Spanish, French, German, whatever version. And the name of the resource file is simply the resource file dash and then a language code. All right. Probably one of these days when I finish up the topic I want to talk about and we have a little bit of time, I'll just go ahead and make one. But we'll definitely do it before the end of the semester. Okay, so that's the string file. Let's look at, I don't think we use this, and I don't think we use this. We do use this D-I-M-E-N-S file, a dimensions file. We have not seen that dimensions file before. In it, we can set certain visual properties. Specifically, we set a vertical whoops, and a horizontal margin. Notice that's not right up against it. That's not right up against it. 
So I set a horizontal and a vertical margin. Why do I do that? Well, again, I can have consistency. So I can have the page look the same or the screen look the same by using a consistent margin. And I could also create another resource file. Maybe on a bigger screen, I set bigger margins. All right? Maybe a screen with a different screen density I handle a different way. All right? So I can specify uh, margins in a file. And even though we don't use them, we can sort of see how we can do some of these other things with styles. I can actually set a color scheme in here. That my primary color is going to be coming from a string. My, pri my primary dark color is going to be coming from another uh, string. Uh, my primary accent color, and I can set up my screen to use these instead of the colors that I am using. And likewise, I can define what these colors are in this file. This is another thing that, if we have time one of these days, I'll, I'll play around with it. But you can set your screen to have a color that you get from the style file and from your color XML file. Again, ensures consistency and also gives you the ability to swap out certain colors. Um, and it's sort of an extreme case because usually with apps, you know, the color scheme you pick is usually fairly neutral and so on. But there are colors that have cultural significance, all right? Um, typically where um, we think of mourning, like for a funeral, you know, we think of dark colors, all right? But in other cultures, there's other colors that are representative of mourning. So I don't know if you're doing a, a, a mobile app for a, uh, a chain of funeral homes or a cemetery or something like that. You might change your color scheme based on cultural considerations. You have the ability to do that is the bottom line, whether you take advantage of it or not. All right, let's look at the layout file. Same thing, we're using a linear layout just because it's the most straightforward. Um, so we have things stacked on top of each other. We have two image views. They each have their own ID, dice one and dice two. They, also, they have their own content description. I forgot about that. Think of the content description as being like an alt attribute on an image in on a web page. So notice that the content description comes from the string file and is slash die. So effectively the alt text for that will be six side die. I actually, I didn't do this, but I could actually change that dynamically. So if they rolled a six, the content description would say six. That would actually be a good idea, but I didn't do that. They each have their own ID, which of course they do, right? Because an ID means it's unique. So we want to change one dice or the other dice to the value. I don't initially give a file, so it just appears as a, a, a blank image. So when I, we initially play this game, there's no image that appears there. The spinner, um, like the spinner that we had last time, the entries come from an array. The prompt, again, in some versions of Android, that prompt would appear when you went into the spinner. Doesn't seem to do it on this version of Android. And the text size, SP. If 
finally have a button. Then I have a text view that says if I won or lost. Okay? Okay, so far, so good. Nothing drastically different here, other than this is the first time we're seeing an image view, and this is the first time we are seeing um, a dimension file to have certain dimensions. And where is that used? Up here. In my layout, I specify that there's a, a padding on the top, bottom, right, and left that is the that comes from the dimension file. All right. And again, on a bigger screen, I could have a different size for that. I'm going to keep all these in here just in case I need to refer back to them. Let's now look at the code. have our package, have the classes that we need, which should correspond to all the different views that we're using. We include Java random. I have a property declared. How do I know that this is a property? What does it mean for it to be a property, first of all? Why is it declared there? It's a class variable. It's a class level variable. That means I can access this variable anywhere in the class. If I put the declaration here in the onCreate, then code in this guy won't be able to see it. All right? In this case, I probably could put it there, and it really wouldn't matter. But I made it a class variable. I don't know why. I just did. All right? Okay, let's see what we're doing. This is going to look almost identical to what we had before, right? Because really, if we were to talk about on a very high level, this, the skeleton of this, of this app is just like we had before. We have a view. We have a button on the view. You click on the button. Something happens. So we call the ancestors on create method. All right. The reason we do that is normally if you override a method on a child class or on a subclass, um, the parent's method doesn't fire off. Well, we want that to happen. We want the parent's method to fire off as well. So we call the superclasses method. And again, that will chain all the way up to the top. All right. I sent the set the content view to our layout activity main. I grab a pointer to the button called P, and I set the buttons on click listener to this. I can do that to I declared that this is a implements the on click listener interface. And I've supplied the onClick method, which means that, yeah, it really does implement that interface. If I didn't do one or the other, then I wouldn't be able to do this. All right? It would, it would give me an error because I couldn't plug it in unless it implements that interface, and I can't say it implements that interface unless it has the, all the functions in, that exist in the interface. What is the functions that exist in the interface? Well, in this case, the onClick method. Real, real, real subtle difference between the coding of this one and the other one. And the other one, if you remember, I had view dot on click listener. I don't have view on click listener here. What's different? Why am I allowed to just say on click listener here instead of view dot on click listener? The import statement. The other one, I didn't have this import statement. 
So I had to say part of the view object is an on click listener. All right. Whereas here I import the on click listener so I can, I don't have to put anything qualifying the, the path to it. All right. So now the fun starts. Think the fun starts? Yeah. Initialize a total variable. That's a total of the two sides of the dice. I generate two random numbers using this method. I declare a random object and I declare um, execute two random functions on my random object. There's a bunch of ways that you can generate a random number. There's also math.random. Or is or did I import math? No, I didn't. I in, imported Java util. There are other ways to generate the random number. If this was a hardcore computer science or math class, we'd probably spend months discussing what a random number truly is and whether this truly generates a random number or not because some of them get seeded based on a timestamp and so on. And if you really want, if you really are bored, go to like Stack Overflow and, and like, you know, search for like what's the best way to generate a random number. And you'll see people arguing it like it was, you know, someone insulted their family or something. All right. But this is good enough for our purposes. We generate, we use this object to generate two random numbers. What does a six represent? Yeah, the six represents that we're going to generate a random number from zero to five. Why did I pick zero to five? Or let me ask, let me ask another question. Why do I add one here? Right. 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 The, what this simply does is it simply changes. I, I think you were saying it too. To go from instead of going from zero to five, it goes from one to six. Right. Because our dice is numbered from one to six. So this generates a random number from zero to five. We add one to it. We now have a random number from one to six. We do the same thing here. This will give the next int will give us a random number or random enough for our purposes. We add them together to get the 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 two uh, the total of the dice. We use this function, which again is our workhorse. We use this every single thing we develop to grab a pointer to those two images. All right, we need to be able to change those images. Initially, they start out with nothing in them. We need to change those images to contain an image file. Think of an image view, um, view or object as almost being like a picture frame, right? A picture frame, a given picture frame, can have uh, different pictures in it, right? If you put a picture in a picture frame tomorrow, you could come back, or later today, you could come back and change the image that appears in it. So don't think of an image view as being specifically a specific image file. Think of it as being a place to put an image, so like a picture frame almost. So we're grabbing a pointer to those image views so that later on we can put the image that we want to in them. All right? And we do that by saying, find a thing on the on our, our main content view that has a ID of our ID dice one. We know it's an image view, I promise, so we can treat it like an image view. And I'm storing the pointer to that image view in a variable called dice one. All right. Remember, find, find view by ID is a method that exists on the activity or one of the ancestors. And um, because we know that that's an image view, we can tell it, hey, I'm going to cast it as an image view. Treat this like an image view. Do the same thing for spinner. Do the same thing with the results. I'm going to assume I lose. 
unless I found out that I won. Now, you could write the code either way, right? Generally speaking, one way or another is, is usually a little bit easier, all right? So, um, and, and sometimes you could try writing it one way, like assume they won and find out if they lost, and the code might get confusing, which case try the other way, all right? So it's easier to assume that they lost and test to see if they won. So, I assume they lost. I set my Boolean to false. But you did not win. I then test to look at what the user selected and the value of the two die. So if they picked the item in position zero, which is, what's the item in position zero? It is low. The item in position one is seven, position two is high. If, the, if they pick low and it's less than seven, we have a winner. All right. If they have picked seven and they pick seven, we also have a winner. Finally, if they picked high and it's above seven, we have a winner. If they've in fact won, display this text from the string file. Otherwise, set this string file. Now, this is a little bit confusing code, but this is a way to point to an actual file that we want to set in the image. The one thing I didn't show you is in the drawable for folder, I have D1 through D6, which if you can imagine D1 is the dice showing one dot, D2 is two dots, all the way up through six. So I have six specific images. All right. I'm going to set the image resource for dice one. What is dice one again? It's that image view, it's that picture frame, that corresponds to the image view in our main content view for dice one. I'm going to set it equal to get resource, the identifier, that is the file name, is the letter D plus the value of D1. What's the value of D1? Uh, I'm sorry, D plus the value of D1. Yeah, what's the value of D1? It's the value that, will, that dice one was rolled as. It's going to be a number one through six. So, if I roll a two, D2 is going to have a value of two, or D1 is going to have a value of two. I then look for the thing that has a name of D2. Notice here that the extension doesn't matter. I don't put the extension in. I only say it's a drawable. Now, I don't know if you happen to have a PNG and a JPEG both called D2, what would happen. But avoid that, all right? Or experiment and tell me what happens. So this is what's necessary to find the file called D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 in the drawables folder and then use that to put that image in the image view, which really is a picture frame for images. Same thing with dice too. Yes. Uh, so get identifier there mm -hmm. automatically will take uh, D1, which is an integer, and just cast it to the string. Yeah, Java actually, this is one of those, um, um, usually like when I talk about Java in, 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 um, in classes, I, I say, you know, it's like 95% object oriented. Uh, Java has a couple little cheats that are not <laughs> that are not purely object oriented. This would be an example of that. Normally, Java doesn't do any sort of. For the most part, Java you have to do explicit conversions in Java. There are a handful of times though where, you, where, where implicit conversions are done, and one of them is if you add a string and a number, it assumes that you want to add them to.
and then it adds them together. Uh, and what do we mean when we add strings together? We concatenate. So it takes a D and follows it by a one. So that that is that is that is just an aspect of of Java. All right. Um, you know, uh, in my Java class, we can say we'll say the price of pizza is twelve dollars. Well, we have a similar thing where we have a hard code string. The price of pizza is, and then we concatenate on the the, the double variable that contains the the dollar amount. So it does that implicit conversion for you? Now, a few things about images. Um, one thing that is very common that we're not doing in this case, but we can do in other cases, is to give different um, images based on um, based on um, the um, screen density, the pixel density. Because again, on a not so dense <coughs> screen, this image would look really big. On a very dense screen, these images would look tiny. All right. So on a very dense screen, you might want to have a bigger version of the image so that it would look about the same no matter what the screen density was. But I, again, I didn't do that in this case. The other thing I could do is I could have different drawable resources depending on the countries. All right. I could... Um, you know, I could, um, you know, um, have them, you know, have red, white, and blue dice for the United States, have um, red, green, and white for Mexico, red and white for Canada. You know, I could color code, I could make different dice for the different um, uh, languages, or actually different countries as well. So language and country are really two separate parameters, and you could have resource files for both of them, all right? And it would find it in the appropriate draw, drawable folder, drawable resources, without me having to code anything. Any questions on this? All right. Let's, let's put bedding in. And let's start out where it just assumes that you bet a dollar. It starts you out with $100, and then it assumes every bet's uh, a dollar. All right? Every play costs a dollar. We could certainly expand that where you could bet as much as you wanted to, up to how much you had, but that's a problem for a different day. All right? So how would, we, how would I make it so that it kept track of how much money I had? What do I need to do? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable at the class level indicating what my total amount was. And I'll call it, I don't know, balance. And I'll initialize it to what I want it to be initialized to, $100, $100 let's say. All right. What do what else do I have to do? Uh, as soon as uh, as soon as it calls that on um, click method, so when you click the button, it should automatically deduct a dollar. If it's just assuming you're betting one dollar, I'll buy that. So right here. Yes, you're right. I could do what you suggested, but I'm not going to. All right, I'll, I'll show you the way I'm going to code it. Um, what I'm going to do is this, that if they want, no, no, you're right. I do want to do that. So I'm going to go in here and say, Bow equals bow, bow equals bow minus one. All right.
Now, what else do I have to put in here? Well, if they won, I actually want to add two, right? Because if they had 100, they bet one immediately is going to knock them down to 99. If they won, I don't want to just give them one. That would just bring them back up to 100. So I have to give them two to get them up to 101. So if they pick low and it's low, they pick high and it's high, I'm going to increment by two. If they pick seven and it's seven, I want to increment by five because I want the net effect to be plus four. Now what do I want to do? Well, I'm keeping track of it. Can the user see what their balance is? No. No. All right. So I'm going to want to change that so that the user sees it. Here's what I'm going to want, all right, non-negotiable. Whatever is on here now, I'm going to want below it the word balance, and then I'm going to want a text box that shows the balance. How would I fix that? How do I, what do I need to add? Be two text views, right? Because I don't want I don't want them to manually be able to change the balance. All right. Programmatically, I'm going to change it. All right. What else am I going to want to add? Pardon me. Well, we we know how much. Well, maybe. I could say you won $4, here's your balance, but I'm just going to show the new balance. Just assuming that that's all I want to show is the new balance. What else do I have to add? Uh, have, to have, have to have a string for the word balance. So let's go and do that. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to pick string, name equals balance. balance in my activity I'm going to have two text views first one I don't really need an ID for why not well because I'm never going to change that via my, via my code. All right. The text is going to be at string balance. This one, however, I do want the name of, I do want to be able to program it, so I'm going to give it an ID of balance. Starts off with nothing, and then I'm going to want to put, where do I put the code to actually show the balance? 
at the end of the on-click event here. Well, I have to point to that. I will post this version so that you can look at the code if you're having a hard time seeing this. So now I have something called balance that I can point to. And I can say something like, balance set text val dot to string does that work doesn't seem to um Google real quick. Now we can play for big money. Okay, so now I pick low, I play low, I won, I have 101. I have 100, and if you play this long enough, you'll find that the odds are stacked against you. <laughs> As it dwindles down. There's one thing that if you noticed, when I first opened this up, notice that it doesn't show me what my balance is. That's the one thing that's, one of the things that's wrong with it. There's, there might be some other ones as well, but that's the one glaring one. What could I do to fix that? I could do this. Put up and right after on the on create, I could go and create another pointer for balance. And then it should show me balance. Balance 100. Question, is this variable, text balance, the same as this variable? No. No. All right. Because this variable was de defined in this function. This variable was defined in this function. All right. In terms of uh, programming, it's known as the scope of the variable. 
a program that's declared in a function can only be seen within that function. So therefore, this variable here, even though it's used for the exact same purpose, there's two different variables. Now, I could fix that if I wanted to by just copying this line and making it a, a class variable like I did with balance, right? If I did it with balance, I wouldn't need to create that uh, variable more than once, all right? Um, but this is such a small issue that it really doesn't matter. Um, you're just using it to grab a pointer, no real reason to make that a class level uh, attribute. Questions over this? I want to spend a minute to talk about your next homework assignment. Because your next homework assignment is to make rock, paper, and scissors. And for an extra challenge, create a Java class that has the rock, paper, and scissors logic. All right, if you want to try something different. All right. So let's take inventory. I always think it's useful when you have a new project. And this is something I do even if I'm working on a project. Take inventory and examine what do you know and what don't you know. All right. Or where have I seen this before is another way to say it. So your rock, paper, and scissors will look something like this. You could do this a bunch of different ways. I would guess you would have spinner. Two images. Sound familiar? You make a choice of which one you want. Push the button. The two images display, and then you get a message to say you win, you lose. So it's real similar to what we have here. With a little bit of tweaking, you should be in a position. What you need, you need a spinner, you need to be able to get the value of the spinner. We've seen how to do that. We've seen how to write code so that when you press a button, it goes and does its thing. We've seen how to dynamically create images. And all I did to get those images in the drawable is just drag them in the drawable folder. And finally, we've seen to how to dynamically set text to say you win, you lose. All right? All these things should be in string files. That's the one thing, if you look at this example, I, I almost gasped in the middle of it. I did not use the, the string constants for a few of these things. I instead hard-coded some strings. Shame on me. All right? Um, what you will need to write is the logic for rock, paper, and scissors. All right? And I, th I assume we all know it. Rock beats, I think we know it. Where does it go? Rock beats, scissors, scissors beats paper, Paper beats rock. All right. Um, and there's sort of a brute force way you can do it, or there's maybe a little slicker way to do it. All right. Um, if you uh, pick uh, the same thing, it's, it's considered a draw, and no one wins. If you want to add a little, like, counter that indicates how many you won or lost, uh, feel free to do that as well. Now, for an extra challenge, we haven't talked about this yet, but to put the logic somewhere else, put it in a, its own Java class, if you want a bit of an extra challenge. Because we will talk about that. Um, because really, um, we're not necessarily going to write all our uh, Android apps as just one giant activity. All right? We may have the need to use rock, paper, or scissors a couple different places within our larger app. So, might as well make a class for it. Then I have a component that I can use. And I don't ever, ever have to worry about writing that logic again. All right, questions? Anyone going to lab? All right, have a good week. And we will see you on Tuesday of next week. I will upload this example, so some of the last few things that I did, if you want to.